Hey, I want to talk to you about Run the Race. It's a faith-based film that's hitting the uh, home market. You'll be able to catch it at home. It's available only right now through Walmart, and you want to check that out. But I'm going to break this film down, tell you things I like, didn't like, and you can find out if this film is right for you. All right, folks, uh, I'm Brandon, and this is Pops on Pop Culture. And I break down different things, movies and comic books and different things like that. And today I want to talk to you about a film called Run the Race. It was produced by Tim and Robbie Tebow, written by Jake McIntyre. And I'm going to put links in the description. We had interviews with Jake. He talked about the development of the script, getting it to the screen, meeting the Tebows, getting them involved, and even the cast. And, and he shares a funny story. So I'll put that in the description. You can get more of that sort of like behind the scene insider stuff during my interview with Jake. The film itself, let's break that down. I'm going to go through some different things I like and didn't like about it, and you can kind of find out what you think for yourself. So the first thing is, while I say it is a Christian film or a faith-based film, this is not a heavy-handed film. If you are a fan of War Room and, let's say, the Kendrick Brother films, and I'll give you a link to Overcomer, their new film, which comes out in August, I'll tell you, this isn't like that. Um, it's not real heavy-handed, anything like that. So it's, it centers on two brothers. Tanner Stein plays uh, Zach. He's a central character in this film. He's the new high school superstar football player and his brother David who is Evan Hofer and David had been a quarterback and a superstar on the team but had a head injury so now he suffers from epileptic seizures so he can no longer play football he's trying to and trying to heal and feel better he's trying to get doctor's permission and that kind of thing but the boys have been struck with tragedy. They're basically raising themselves. They have a surrogate grandmother. Her name is Frances Fisher. And she's an actress that you're gonna recognize and know when you see her, but uh, great actress. And then they are, tr are trying to find a way to get a scholarship or get a ride so they can get out of this little small town and get their, well, get their opportunities out into the world and make a name for themselves. But tragedy hits again, right? So Zach is injured and now that that scholarship, all those scouts showing up and all of that, that doesn't look like it's gonna happen now. So they are really in a completely different place, a completely different journey. Zach and David, um, he's been hurt. He ends up in a hospital scene, ends up meeting a girl. David is a lot more uh, tolerant with a, a different kind of faith and spirituality than his brother. Uh, there's a lot of bitterness for Zach towards their alcoholic dad. David tends to be a lot more forgiving. All these dynamics I thought really ground the film in real life. And during that interview I mentioned with you with Jake, he talks about how while the film is not a true story, it is rooted in true and real life events. He and his friends experience, he kind of pulls all these different things together, finds highlights and good things to pull and put together into these two central characters. And that's how the film basically progresses, sets up and, and goes through there. And like, how do they get themselves out of this? And David has the idea that even though he can't play football, he's a superstar runner, he's a superstar athlete. So David decides to become the new track star and try to get a scholarship that way. Maybe that can get them out of town. They start running together and those kinds of things. That's how the film, pretty much unfolds most of the way. It is um, a good film, it is uh, done well, and this is not a high budget film or anything like that. Like I said, the Tebow brothers produced it, but it did very well. Um, he got his name behind it, so it made it into the top 10 of the box office for a reason. I think beyond just the faith-based community, sports fans, you have someone who's really into running, uh, track and field, and even football to a certain extent, and there's some appeal there. I think that it would be all right. You know, I think the film is definitely, in that sort of like six to seven category on where you land on uh, that appealing for you. Um, the cast does a good job. The boys are fine. I'm gonna move a little further into spoilers and stuff like that. So if you don't want any of that, this is your time to kind of like ditch the video and then come back when you want to catch the whole thing because I don't want to ruin anything for you. And I, I, won't, I won't ruin anything major, major, but I will tell you that uh, as David tries to overcome his epilepsy, it, it's not going well. And there's a lot of pressure and frustration for Zach to deal and reconcile with his dad, deal with his brother's illness, why his mom's not around, and try to get out. His, his entire life is rooted, entire goal in life is rooted on trying to get out of town. That will make his life better. And I think what the film does really, really well is show us how difficult it is when our hopes and dreams are crushed. You know, what do we tell kids? What do you tell your teenager, your boy? You know, when he blows his knee out, you know, what do you tell 
you know, your girl, when she finds out, you know, she's not going to get into school she wants to go to. And a boy breaks up with her at the end of high school and they got to go into college alone. And so the film does a good job of touching on at least the emotional tenet of all that and, and how you are faced with that. I think that that part is one of the strong points. I think it was good to see the alcoholic dad stuff not be sort of like sugar coated. Like, you know, there's one scene where the teens are drinking. So I know there's a lot of Christians who may not like that, but that's real life. And to have an alcoholic dad who's just broken and damaged in his own way over his wife not being around, I think is a valid thing. And it was really cool to see them not sugarcoat or avoid any of that. They did a good job with all of that. The performances are good. Like I mentioned, Frances Fisher, she's good in everything that she does. Michael T. Williamson, who's famous for his roles Bubba and Forrest Gump, he has a role. There's a great cameo or two. So Eddie George actually plays the scout. He's a famous running back for the Tennessee Titans. So make sure you keep your eye out for Eddie. He does make an appearance for two as well. And I think the, the, the cast and all of that, that is definitely never any of the shortcomings of the film. One, it does have some budget constraints. So it's not as high... Uh, quality or dynamic as say Hollywood films would be, but they did a great job with what they had to work with. And I think Jake McIntyre's script is, is very good. I think it was good to see things not buttoned up as this really Hollywood cliche or faith-based film with big salvation changes and all that. There's a moment and there's a change, but it also comes with a lot more uncertainty than other films do. I think that it has a Hollywood ending in a way and that, you know, life goes on and they, you know, how, the, how, where the, the college scene becomes, and it becomes pretty believable in that, uh, I think a lot of people think this is a true story, right? So it's not based on the Tebos. Uh, the last name is, I think, Truett in the film. And there is a player named Pruitt in real life that goes on to Florida Gators. And while Jake talks about in the interview that a lot of this is based on real stuff, it's, it's it in and of itself is not true. And I think there leaves a certain element of uncertainty for the characters at the end of the film. I would have seen, I would have liked to see a lot more of that. And it does get a little slow at times. There was way too much just running and the musical video stuff which you know it just it just gets old i think it's a kind of a crutch you know you get you get a scene that's 20 or 30 seconds long it should have been like eight i think it would have been better to show maybe some more events rather than so much training so one of the more interesting elements is the boys together when they're interacting with one another and i would have liked to see a lot more of that so later in the film um, we have just kind of waste of space, waste of time. When Zach's trying to woo a girl and bring her into the mix, there's a couple scenes, but that kind of gets lost in the shuffle. It's awkward too, like you don't quite get Zach's roller coaster ride of emotion. Things seem very forced at times, and I, I haven't gone through all of the stuff on the new DVD and all the interviews and all the behind the scenes stuff. It's available through Walmart, walmart.com, and you can check that out. They actually got exclusive rights to the film for like a month. It'll it'll open wide digitally and for home uh, in June, but you can check it out now, and it has some great behind the scenes stuff and things like that. So I don't know where the original script and the filmmaking and deleted scenes kind of play a lot of this out uh, but that was a little bit of a shortcoming for me and then of course just just the rushness of the ending you know this, this is the florida gator stuff and you know i gotta be honest right there's folks who just hate on the florida gator so i mean if that's your thing you aren't gonna like that part of the film but uh, i liked it i thought it was fine i, I don't really have a, a preference one way or the other and not being a gator fan I mean, it's fine i like tim tebow that was kind of cool seeing him have a little spot I think it'll be interesting to see if TiVo does more of this, more of that, bringing films uh, to the limelight, getting it to the mainstream audiences. This this made it to the top 10 on the box office, so that was really cool to see. Um, so that's my rundown on Run the Race. I hope you uh, like the film. If you go check it out, tell me what you think. Uh, blow up my comments, tell me where I'm crazy or I'm good, or tell me you're like, I'm not seeing this and why I won't see it, or I'm sick of faith-based films, or I love faith-based films. And you tell me what you think. We welcome all the comments. We try to reply to those. And as I said, hit the like button, pound the subscribe, follow us, help us grow our channel. Appreciate your time. This is Pops.